Excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just remove it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is The Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. That it is. What up, Dustin? Um, animation is what's up. This is yeah, man. This is our first animated episode. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, took us eighty uh, something episodes. This is the season of a lot of firsts. First Sami movie. Yeah, I mean, first... hey, you know, we uh, we going big. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I'm psyched personally. Yeah, because this is your pick. Uh, a scanner darkly. Want to uh, yeah. let people know. Oh, I guess we should give people a rundown if this is their first time tuning in. This is, as Mally said, the Silver Linings playlist. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, first of all, welcome. Uh, we are a podcast that likes to watch movies like this week's episode on a scanner darkly. Uh, movies that don't typically end in an upbeat fashion. They kind of leave you a little depressed, confused, uh, troubled, baffled, whatever it is. Um and we try to find the silver lining at the end of the at the end of the movie, hence the title. So uh this week is of course Mally's pick. You can tell by his enthusiasm. <laughs> um I'm I'm happy to be here, guys. I'm psyched. So why don't so you excited. tell me uh what your relationship is with this movie? Okay, so I saw this movie knowing I saw it in theaters, of course, mm-hmm. at what at a pl- at a place called Yes Cinema in Columbus, Indiana, and I still live there. Um, it was Yes Cinema was weird. It was like this little like kind of artsy art house theater. Like they did like midnight screenings of like Pulp Fiction and um, Dead Alive. Mm. Um, it was weird in like in the middle of like this fucking town surrounded by. I mean, it farmers. sounds awesome. Yeah, no, it was rad. And it's funny now, like, at the time, that was, like, the only artsy thing in the town. Now you go to downtown Columbus and it's all artsy and shit. Yeah. Hip and whatnot. Anyway, so I went there to a midnight screening the night this came out. Knowing nothing about it, I was just, like, invited with some friends. Like, hey, we're going to go see this weird movie at Yes. I was like, all right, cool. And I didn't know... That, you know, I didn't know fucking Keanu Reeves and, like, the cast in this movie is fucking stacked, mm-hmm. first off. I didn't know it was a fucking Linklater film. Like, I didn't know shit about this. I didn't know it was fucking rotoscope animation, nothing. So, I walked in cold as shit and walked out just being like, what the fuck did I just watch? Mm-hmm. Holy hell. Mm. And, yeah, it was awesome. I bought the DVD, you know, and had it and... I don't know. When we were picking stuff for this season, I was like, oh, shit. Let's do Scanner Darkly. Like, let's go. Yeah, it's funny. We have... That's my relationship with the movie. We have um, a list, uh, an ongoing list of movies that are ripe for the picking for this show. And Mally never picks from it. <laughs> it's always interesting whenever you pick a movie because I'm like, oh. oh my god, no! I ab- I absolutely refuse to pick off that list. I'm just throwing <laughs> curveballs at you every I episode. Know. It's, whenever like, you're like, here's what we're doing next week. I'm like, shit, I didn't even think about that as an option. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I, that, I I love the dynamic we have. Like you, like you throw curveballs pretty regularly too like we have some episodes coming up when we were like oh hey we're doing this i'm like i don't what the fuck is that dustin yeah uh, um yeah some two very big curve curveballs coming up this season yeah. that were dustin's choices so. is, is one of those this is kind of a clue is one of those a documentary yep yeah have you ever i mean this is completely inside baseball shit have you ever seen that movie nope okay that's gonna be a great that might be uh <laughs> an all-timer episode okay anyways back oh, to no. back to this um so was I, this your first time seeing it i have tried watching this movie exactly one time before when it first came out really and i couldn't get into it i was i guess i would have been 15 or 16 at the time and i i think i was just really too young to get what was going on and was just too uh focused on the animation and not getting it. I mean, I was probably only like when this came, this came out. In what oh six? Oh six, yeah. 
So, I mean, I was like 17. Yeah. I mean, I just think I personally was just too young to really get the... Like I said, I knew Keanu Reeves, and that was about it from this movie at that time. Um, So, I I okay. didn't... I was too focused on that and the animation. You didn't know, like, Woody Harrelson or Winona Ryder? Not really, man. I didn't really know about them until... Interesting. Like, I, I didn't start really getting into movies until around this time. Like... 1617 is when I like went full head into it where I watched everything I get my hands on. So I I might have known them from other movies I'd seen them in, but uh I didn't know them by name or by voice like, or anything not like even, that. Well, I guess I mean, I probably well, I wasn't terribly familiar with RDJ at this point. No. I mean, this was hot off Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And this is pre Iron Man too. So I so, don't like, really know who he I was, was either. I just knew, like, for the longest, like, I knew Robert Downey Jr. was like, oh, he was in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and I love that movie. Like, I was familiar with him. Like, he had been in other stuff, but, like, he wasn't on my radar until yeah. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Pre-2008, this, he was a totally different actor. Like, it's... Oh, 100%. Yeah. In my, like, people claim Iron Man has his comeback. Nah, fuck that. This movie? <laughs> Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was his comeback. Yeah, yeah. Um... So yeah, and that's I, a perfect film. I had this was my only my first real time watching this movie, and I liked it. I I think I got it. <laughs> I mean, it's not yeah too heady of a movie. It's got elements of like Blade Runner and stuff in there, but it just uh, I, I like I said, I think at the time when it came out, I couldn't appreciate it as uh as there it there are I mean. It's definitely a hard movie to get into because, like, there's even, like, I'd seen this movie multiple times on this rewatch. And even at one point, I was like, wait, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, there's a lot of like, times in this movie I was like, is anything going to happen? Like, is the plot going to move forward or are we just hanging out with this this group of stoners, basically? <laughs> um, and, yeah, you're, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So I guess. Until the end where shit just goes fucking bonkers. I guess let's, uh, let's get into. The details of A Scanner Darkly. So like we mentioned, the year is 2006. The director is Richard Linklater. Uh, stars Keanu Reeves, Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, Winona Ryder, and Rory Cochran. Uh, the budget is $8.7 million. And unfortunately only managed to grow $7.6 million. And currently sits at a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. I thought it was higher than that. Interesting. Uh, that's um, the uh, critic score. So maybe the audience okay. score is a little higher. Um, so two things. One, I have a weird love-hate relationship with this director. Yeah. He's made some great movies. Like, he made Slacker, mm -hmm. which is the indie film of indie films. Mm -hmm. um, but also, he made Boyhood. Yeah, I've only seen Boyhood I the once. I fucking hated Boyhood so much. Not a good movie, but an interesting experiment. Like, yeah, like the fucking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The longevity know, of like, it? <laughs> well, yeah, like, oh, they filmed it over the course of how many years? Like, cool. The actual, like, if you ignore that aspect, mm -hmm. it's kind of a shitty movie. Yeah, it's not a good movie. Um, um also i have one thing to admit for the longest time i was convinced benicio del toro was in this movie i could see it i could see him being in this movie i, I thought he was fleck oh yeah, yeah i can see it Ro i mean what's his name roy cochran's yeah character. is that his name I know who he is. He kind of looks like Lee schreiber's older brother <laughs> um dazed like, and confused bro yeah i mean i I see where you're. Why you would confuse him with Benicio del Toro in this animation? He's like one of the only people in this cast, and I'm really not too familiar with. Like everyone else, kind of blew up, and he's got his own career going for sure. He's still working, but yeah, I mean, he's been in some stuff. Yeah, um, I I always thought this was a Spike Jones movie for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, it also seems like something I, Spike for Jones a second. Could do. My head went to Spike Lee, and I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, Spike Lee did this movie. Dust Scanner Darkly. <laughs> um, Honestly, I'd watch it. I'd watch it, too. Why don't we watch the trailer? Speaking of watching stuff. Hey, bet we won't. All right. It may just be my imagination. 
Whatever it is that's watching, it's not human. Gentlemen, you are about to witness for approximately 61 cents the perfect homemade silencer. That sure is some silencer. Just drive over to my place, kick back, get some. Was that street sign? The was the font Comic Sans? It looked very Comic Sans, but I don't think so. They're in my hair, on my skin. They're all over the place. This is a world getting progressively worse. Can we not agree on that? What's on the shirt, man? Damage has taken place to the. <laughs> That's kind of my philosophy. And the right hemisphere is yeah, this this, this this movie brain. predicted the future, <laughs> obviously to an extreme, yes. but decently accurately. Yeah. I could be murdered. <coughs> How did I get here? I tip my hat to any entity that could bring someone. I see why this movie didn't do too well, though. This trailer. It's not a great trailer. It's hard to sell a movie like this. Window like that infamous Beatles song. And this trailer kind of makes it look like it's a different kind of movie. What does the scanner see? Into the head. Into the heart. Does it see into me? Clearly. I bet if this movie came out now, it would do better. Oh, 100%. So yeah, it's not a great trailer. Uh, lots not of a great fades trailer. to black in this trailer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, I, th I think if you put this movie out today, it would do a lot better because these are more household names now. Like, not that they weren't then, but I think given the internet and everything, people are more familiar with who's who. Um, I think you could definitely sell this movie now. Um, especially... Considering the fact that we're still in quarantine when we recorded this, so you could just do all the animation from home. <laughs> Fucking still. Good God. All right. Uh, shall we discuss I the movie? I want to leave the house, Dustin. <laughs> well, you can't. So, in the meantime. But like, I, I mean, I've gone to the, like, the grocery store and stuff, but like, I want to go like somewhere else. I have no problem with it. I, maybe it's because I mean, I'm I, an introvert. I don't mind not leaving I mean, my house. I mean, so am I. Like, I've been very productive being at home but like also sometimes i just want to go like walk around places mm -hmm. and i don't know i miss movie theaters do a ton of that that's it yeah dude i'm i think i've mentioned this but like literally a week before like the stay at home order got issued a badass new amc opened up blocks mm -hmm. from my house like huge lounge and restaurant out in the lobby like super nice and then a week later yeah and closed now down. they're basically every studio seems to be holding their breath for Tenet, and if Tenet doesn't, you know, come out when it's supposed to, they're saying pretty much no new movies until December. So everything's running on that Nolan movie. What a fucking year, dude! It's Holy fucking shit. crazy, man. I mean, there's certain oh, things Jesus. like they just announced like the 85th different release date for New Mutants, and I'm like, man, just put that shit on VOD. Like, say, oh, yeah. spare like, these actors. Like, at this actors. point, I really want to see that movie. Same. And I'm guessing it's probably not as good as it could be, or as good as that trailer sells it. And I'll still be fine probably with that. Probably not. I'll still be fine with a mediocre no, X-Men movie. I just want to see it. Yeah. I mean, no. Well. Anyway, A Scanner Darkly so, is a movie. Quick question. Richard Linklater, uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. Boyhood, and I think the word you were looking for is, like, the novelty of, oh... We filmed this over 12 years. Yes, whatever. novelty. Was, That's 100% the word I was looking was for. Was he also the director that made that movie with John Malkovich that you won't see for 100 years? Do you, do you remember that? probably. Do you remember that story, though? There was some movie, I think it was even called The 100 Year Movie or something like that, that uh, uh, John Malkovich did with some director, and they're like, well, no one's going to see it for 100 years, so... I don't know. Uh, can you Fucking imagine how bad that movie probably. could be? <laughs> like, yeah. all that but like, hype. Also, dude, he did, like, Before Midnight, mm -hmm. Before Sunset, mm -hmm. Before Sunrise. Like, he did that fucking trilogy. Yeah. He did Dazed and Confused, Slacker, mm -hmm. um, uh, fucking School of Rock. <laughs> yeah. 
I like Skull Love Rock. Um, he's done other stuff. I just don't remember. He did that sequel anymore. to Days and Confuse. Everybody wants some or whatever, right? Or am I making that, that up? That was a sequel to Dazed and Confused? I'm pretty sure. I'm going to look it up, but I didn't see it. Really? I'm pretty sure. Uh, is that what it was called? Everybody Want Some? Yeah. That wasn't a sequel to Dazed and Confused. I'm um, pretty sure it's supposed to be. Or at least like the spiritual sequel to it. Uh, well, that doesn't do, do, fucking do, 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 do. count. Uh, the project is considered, considered a spiritual sequel to Linklater's 1993 film Days and Confused. Spiritual. Well, not a sequel. It was, it was propped up as uh, as a sequel to Days and Confused. Like, that's how they, I remember them marketing it. Uh, anyways, well, I didn't see whatever. it. So, Scanner Darkly, finally, 20 minutes later, we're going to talk about it. Um, Woo! What do, you, what do you got? Um. Okay, first off, like, the animation of this movie's pretty fucking trippy right i dig it like it's rad uh i heard it was hell in post-production probably yeah i can um, imagine yeah because apparently like the movie was completely sh- like because they sh- they shot this digitally mm-hmm. so like they shot it edited it cut it together like picture locked then it was animated yeah which basically like, which you're making a movie makes twice. sense you don't want to like yeah you don't want to animate stuff that you know you're not going to use, but because uh, apparently, like this was shot in what, like a month? Yeah, I and think then so. I think the post production process was almost two years. Yeah, like that's. Nuts. You know what it makes me think of? It makes the animation style kind of reminds me of like Borderlands, like that video game. And then yeah, it also yeah, makes kinda. me think of uh, we had a real big like fetish for making like these stylized movies in the mid two thousands, like a. The the one I think of other than this yeah, we did. is Sin City. Like this it almost True. seems like the uh like the brother to Sin City this movie. Spiritual sequel. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I tried avoiding saying that word. But uh huh. Like, you get uh huh like some good animation when like the character I think it's smart the way they did it of shooting the movie for real and then uh animating it. Because you feel like these characters are really there. And I feel like after a few minutes you kind of forget that it's animated. Or at least I it it kind of exited in my brain that I was watching an animated movie and I was just seeing the real characters there. I mean I think the hardest person to animate would be Woody Harrelson. Like he doesn't have so much uh definitive features as like Keanu. Keanu's got those narrow eyes and that beard that really sets yeah. him apart. Robert Downey Jr. in this movie, he's got the glasses and everything. Woody Harrelson, I could still tell it's Woody Harrelson, even without that voice. And I think that's impressive. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this is another movie similar to Black Swan, where I was like, dude, were Nona Ryder still doing stuff? Yeah, man. It seems like um, she sneaks in there. <laughs> she really does. Dude, she's like... Again, the whole cast in this movie, fucking great. Yeah. No, I love every like, member of this cast. They all play their parts really well. I mean, it's not hard to, for Woody Harrelson to play a stoner, uh, Robert Downey Jr. to, to pay the, play the fast mouth, sarcastic know-it-all, you know. Um, it. You know what this makes me think of, though? We One other thing that, uh, in the, regards to the animation, this feels like some early Adam Reed stuff, like some Frisky Dingo or something like that, with like a bigger budget. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I think that's why I like God. I like this movie so much. Like on, I would love a Frisky Dingo feature length film. I, w- I want him to reboot it now that Archer's pretty much done. Like, and I think like Archer's great, but I'm sorry, it has never come close to Frisky Dingo. <laughs> well, Archer's the first four seasons are perfect, and then. It just slowly got less and less interesting. I think that's a lot. It has a lot to do with budget because I feel like a lot of animated shows go that route. Like when they get bigger budgets, the the animation style changes, and it's not there's not as much heart into it. Like I still like old South Park way more than new South Park. I kind of I don't even watch the show anymore. But like when they yeah I go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say when they when you see there's less love put in into it because it's going from hand drawn or, you know, in South Park's case construction paper basically into Adobe Flash or whatever else they're using. You can feel the creativity gets less and less. It's like 
the thing that makes shows like that so good is because there is limits on, you know, what you can and can't do. You have to focus Dude, inward on the story and yeah. say what you will about South Park. But did you ever watch that fucking documentary like six, oh, no. seven days to air or whatever? Yes, I did. But I'm not, I'm not Holy saying. Holy I'm not saying they shit. don't put, put a lot of work into what they do. I'm just saying you can tell them Nothing the writing. Nothing has ever stressed me out as much as that. Yeah. and Holy fuck. I mean, they figured out a way to do it. I still think it suffers in some quality when you're trying so hard to fit in as many relevant cultural references of the time into a show and instead trying to make something that's timeless, you know? Like, yeah. So anyway, you know. a scanner darkly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, we keep getting sidetracked, but uh, we did. That's that's been a running thing this whole season. <laughs> um, we cannot stay focused, and no, I think it's because we've been quarantined. We don't get to talk a lot. That's very true. So we've really <laughs> been we've really been using this podcast and as an excuse just to, to just out. talk about yeah, just pretty much. Um, uh, I had um, no idea this movie was based on Philip K. Uh, Dick's work, and now that I yeah, know dude. that, it makes a lot more sense. Makes a lot more fucking a lot sense, of sense. It? I mean, I yeah. Apparently, the scene where Fleck uh tries to kill himself. I was just about to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they wanted to use an actual recording. Yeah, uh, of Philip K. Dick reading that, mm-hmm. but I guess they didn't. I don't remember why. I don't think they could get it or something I, like that. I don't when I was. read the quality of the audio recording was just not up to par for a feature film. Like it was just so old oh, and crackly okay. that they couldn't clean it up as much. So they got that one guy to to narrate it. That that scene is so fucking good. <laughs> it's so oh, that scene's amazing. It's so weird and funny, and I'm, the narration makes like it so much better. Like when he changes his mind and goes to the store to get a bottle of wine, yeah. <laughs> and not just a cheap bottle of wine. I got to get a good bottle of wine, and I love that. Like, <laughs> which set him back seventy dollars. Yeah. And then the time passes. They're like, oh, and now we're up to the sixth grade of all his sins. <laughs> and it's like, well, read your sins for a thousand years or whatever. So so good. Um. Hmm. I, I feel and that was the year he discovered masturbation. Yeah. And that's when you add on another thousand years of all the sins, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think everyone uh, commits... That's probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. For sure. It's probably my favorite, too. I think everyone commits so fucking hard in this movie. Like, Rory Cochran as a dope fiend is so fucking good. Like, even just the opening scene with him trying to get these imaginary bugs and, like, rummaging through the dogs Oh, my for... God, dude. That scene makes me want to take a shower so badly. And then when the fact that he takes a shower and you're like, you got to immediately get right back in. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah, that... I kind of forgot that was, like, the opening scene. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it just kind of starts right there. Uh, but not to be outdone, Robert Downey Jr. is probably my favorite character in this movie. He... I mean, it's Robert Downey Jr. doing his thing, and it just works so fucking well. I love that he his character just gets kind of shuffled off at the end there. <laughs> like, he has, like, yeah. no fanfare, nothing. He just, and now you're arrested, pretty much. Dude, I love when he's there trying to, like, after he's, like, interrogated, he's trying to apply to be a police officer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, I, um, so I'll just get the application at the front desk. Okay, they probably have the application for employment. But like, you know God. what? As good as he is in this movie, he does break one of my big, big cardinal rules of filmmaking uh, that I just can't stand when movies do this. He, what is it? He has no trigger discipline at all. He, when they're, nope. anytime he has a gun, his finger is right there on the trigger. And as someone who doesn't know shit about guns, I know you don't do that unless you're trying to pull it. Like, I hate... He's a druggie, yeah, Justin. That's fair. I get that. But I it just reminded me of, like, so many, like, action movies and everything where people are just running around with their finger right on the trigger. <laughs> I hate it. hate it. I mean, it makes sense in this movie, but he does break that rule. Yeah, he's like a drugged out conspiracy theorist. Speaking of conspiracy theorists... Think- sorry, what were you going to say? I knew you were going to mention this. <laughs> we got to talk about the weirdest cameo in this movie, right? Like, it's in that trailer, and as I was watching the movie, I was scrolling through IMDb, just looking at who all the cast was, in case there was anyone I didn't recognize. Fucking, you know, your boy, Alex Jones, got to, got to be Why in this Why is he movie. my boy? <laughs> That's the, the royal you, your, your, the royal your. Got you, yeah. okay. Yeah. 
uh i don't remember he's isn't he actually speaking truth on the side of the of the street there he's like oh this drug is made by the corporations and blah 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 and then he gets fucking zapped and dr- mm-hmm. probably the only time he's ever spoken the truth in in a character or in real life but yeah what a cameo it's speaking of which now that we're talking he's about in him, he's in um another one of uh link later's movies too is he really i had, i was just about yeah, to look up um, his filmography because i i got i've it never now. seen it but it's uh waking life oh yep you know what's funny his known for on indb a scanner darkly waking life are you practicing communism <laughs> and alex jones uh, alex jones police state 2000 i've gotta see that movie because he directed it <laughs> oh i my gotta God. see it but let's it's see what probably other... just like a 90 minute commercial for the fucking tactical bath he was in a short film recently called gay <laughs> alex jones is a piece of shit dude he is but he is fascinating i mean this is probably weeks old by the time this episode comes out but his eating ass comment that he made recently on his show god damn he is a i have not heard about that one so he's he said because he's in quarantine, he you know he's a, he goes from zero to a hundred real quick. That wait, I thought he didn't believe in this shit. Well, he's in quarantine, or at least he's talking about the idea of quarantine. He said that if it came down to it, he would eat his neighbors so his daughters don't have to go hungry. <laughs> and he mentioned, "I'd eat their ass. I'd eat all of it." And oh dear lord, couple of thoughts. First off, he doesn't have to worry about feeding his daughters because he's probably never going to see them again. Um, but the fact that he immediately jumps to, I would eat my neighbors. Like, I hope that there's a story that comes out, and maybe it has by the time this episode comes out, where his neighbors and him get into a huge argument over that. <laughs> I got to see the Jesus. World Star video of that. That's going to be great. Yeah, like... Yeah, that man's... Uh, again, what, isn't he spouting that this whole thing's like a fucking government hoax? Yeah. I love hypocrisy. He he so is a much. fountain of entertainment, whether you agree with him or not. He Good is, God. He, I mean, okay, so yeah, he's in this fucking movie for like four um, seconds, but yeah, it's undeniably him. So I just yeah, one hundred percent had to point that out. Uh, we haven't really talked about Keanu that much. Um. Uh, um i mean rock solid as always um i actually no i do think he's really fucking good in this movie he's good it's um it's unfortunate he doesn't get to do too much um but i <laughs> my one of my favorite parts about his character is that he hits his head one time and then realizes is he fucking hates his family <laughs> it's a pretty jarring scene him hitting at his head on that uh that kitchen cabinet and he's like Oh yeah, I hate my wife. I hate my kids. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was pretty great. I don't know, Dustin. I feel like you're one cabinet <laughs> to the head away from doing the exact same fucking thing. I wouldn't most hate of my time. family, but I'd hate everyone else. I'm already pretty misanthropic. Uh, we'll so. see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus. Um. So there's one line in this movie. So. Every character in this movie is addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. Donna, Winona Ryder's character, loves like even though this heavy ass substance D shit is in existence, mm-hmm. she loves Coke. Yep. And there's one line that always makes me burst out laughing, and it's when like her and Keanu are kind of getting a little intimate, and then she flips out. She's like, "No, I'm sorry. I just don't like people groping all over me. It's because I do so much Coke." Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I mean. The the end what? <laughs> story reason for that I don't think I ever understood either. Wasn't it something like I don't know I don't remember exactly why it was applied, or maybe it was explained and I missed it. Did they say why she is she just because he's her uh, part of her operation? Like you know, I mean that's I'm pretty much what's implied. Yeah, I yeah. think okay. I didn't know if there was like a physical reason why she didn't yeah. want to. I don't know maybe. You know, the substance D or whatever. Yeah, just so everyone's aware, again, if you're listening to this without watching the movie, fucking why? Yeah. Um, so this ta- this movie 
came out in 06, takes place in 2013, and it's pretty much like 20 to 30 percent of the U.S. population is addicted to this new drug called Substance D. Yeah, we lost the war on drugs to this highly addictive drug called Substance D. Yeah. And, like, everyone, like, you're constantly being monitored by the police and the government, recorded. Surveillance state, for Um, sure. Yeah, dude, like, how fucking, like, it's so crazy. Like, Keanu Reeves' character is assigned to survey his self. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like oh man that's fucking crazy dude how badass are those scramble suits though i was gonna mention the scrambler suits are pretty cool uh in theory completely yeah. impractical but pretty cool i mean i what don't do you mean impractical there is i don't how how the fuck would you do like even the animation of it seems impossible like i mean they did it clearly but man like i don't know bro do you see uh fucking 2020s the invisible man yeah i guess wait what's your point <laughs> they i made... don't know what my point is <laughs> i mean i just it don't made sense before i said it out loud i just don't i mean the suit i guess is head to toe covers your whole body and it's changing between yeah, it's like a massive onesie yeah and it's basically changing oh you what do you think they're comfy he didn't look very comfy in it. In fact, it almost looked like a shell and like he was inside of it. Like it when they show the internal camera, kind of uh kind of how you see Iron Man inside his suit, it just looks like there's a lot of extra space in there. Like it's not form fitting. Like that it's just Maybe it's fleece lined. Maybe. But Which I guess in California heat would fucking suck. Yeah. I, oh, wait, does this movie take place in California? Yeah, it takes place in Anaheim, California, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I just... Oh, wait, yeah, duh. In the trailer, they show a sign for San Diego. Yeah. I'm a dumbass. I just feel like it would be impractical, because, like, there is no way you'd be able to tell one person wearing a suit from another in the instance of... Like, all it would take is one person in a scramble suit to become a murderer, and they will be able to get away with it forever. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I just, good point. I just don't see it as being a practical solution in what this movie's trying to imply, which is, yeah, that it, they kind of go the Watchmen route of, like, every police officer has to be, that's investigating this stuff, has to be in secret for whatever reason. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Um, um, another one of my favorite scenes mentioning San Diego is their little road trip. Yes. When the and Downey Jr.'s character expl- explaining how he left the door locked and yes. booby trapped the house. I love it, and I love how he's like and just how massively confused Woody Harrelson is. Yeah, I mean he's like, if anybody comes to the front door, we got him. And he's like, well, what if they come to the back door or the bathroom window? <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, they wouldn't come in the back door because I left a note on the front door. Yep, <laughs> you left a note on the front door. Yeah, well, what the note say? Come on Come in, on the in. door's unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely that scene and, and the suicide scene, which is a weird sentence to say out loud, is probably my favorite of this movie. Like, I, I don't know which one I like more. Probably probably the, the suicide scene, just because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, just by a hair, yeah. Um, I only have two other notes, honestly, because this movie wasn't really much of a head scratcher all that much. It was more just of an entertaining yeah. ride, but... One thing I noted is that Winona Ryder sure does love to date men named Bob. Because John Reeves is named Bob. Sean Ashton in Stranger Things is named Bob. I'm sure there's a third example for comedic purposes, but I can't think of it right now. I don't know. Just something I happen to notice. So two movies. Yep. Um, in her vast I array guarantee of films you there's a third and television. One. I guarantee you there's a third one. There's got to be. I don't know, man. Grasping at straws, name Bob right there. <laughs> uh, I just feel like if you named your character Bob, you're just, it's lazy. I mean, I'm not to shit on Philip K. Dick, but I don't know. Bob is like the go to for a character's name when you don't have one. It's a placeholder. I don't know. Um, wh- well, I think that's kind of the point. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because Bob wasn't his real name. Yeah. No, I get it. But I'm. He was supposed to be like a normal just everyman. Even coming up with an alias. Just, my name is Bob Johnson. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Um, what other? What other? Bob Arctor. Yeah. What other notes, dumbass? Do you have? Because I only have something about the ending. Um, 
I don't have a ton, honestly, because I assumed you were going to have a bunch. Yeah. I'm kind of shocked that you don't, actually. I mean, it's it's a pretty straightforward movie. It's, uh, you know, who is... It is. There's a little bit of confusion around the middle, because when you're just like, wait, I'm sorry. Hang on. Because, like, it's kind of like, okay, they're going after Keanu Reeves. Like, the police are go- are sending Keanu Reeves to go after himself, but they don't realize that. But then, like, they're... Wait, they actually wanted... Robert Downey Jr.'s character. Yeah, it's it's but not then, a well, well explained police operation. Like I yeah, will, but yes. Oh, well, I was just gonna say it's like I said at the beginning. The movie doesn't. It just seems like it's you're sitting on the couch with these characters and just watching them interact. Like it doesn't feel like a crime thriller. You know what I mean? Until like mm-hmm. they start wrapping things up. And Hank is like, oh, I think I know who you are. You're definitely Bob, you know. And it, why play this game with him if Donna playing Hank knows it all along? And why not just use the security footage that you know you already have to get Robert Downey Jr.? I don't know. It's dude. How about that Donna reveal though? Yeah, I I kept wondering too. I was like, I wonder if they're gonna. That's a pretty good reveal. Yeah, I love how they play it too. Of Oh, I called Donna. She's going to pick you up out front. And then she has to run out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, I, like I said, I, I was entertained by the movie. I didn't really think of it much more than that. I mean, it. they obviously went a little hyperbole with, like, the surveillance state and predicting the future and everything. And, I mean, the only thing I would say is there's probably a good percentage, maybe not 20% of the population, but a good percentage Addicted to opioids, so that's your substance D right mm-hmm. there. The scramble suit, like yeah. I said, I don't think we'll ever get to that point. I think that's ridiculous. I think I don't know, bro. Well, the point of the scramble suit is to protect <laughs> the identity of the police of of the police officer. But I feel like the way we're going, like we don't have to worry. Like police officers don't have to worry about anything for the most part. They get away with with murder. I mean, that's been proven. That's a very good point, actually. So, like, they don't need to hide. If anything, everyone else needs to. So, yeah. Like, my my only real uh, last note here is about the ending. And not even really... Let's jump to the end. Well, do you want to recap what's going on? Yeah. So, over the course of the movie, um, it, we kind of see Keanu Reeves' character just get further and further into his addiction. And so, like, as they're, like, closing the case on Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Barris, like, Keanu Reeves' character, Bob, has just, like, he's just completely fucking lost it. His brain is all scrambled from substance abuse, from this drug, and um, he's pretty much Donna, um, after being revealed that she is actually Hank, his boss pretty much drops him off at New Path, which is this... Supposedly, New Path is the only corporation out there f- actively fighting this substance D addiction. Yeah. Um, And he's dropped off at New Path, and he's goes through one of their rehab clinics, and he's sent out to one of their farms where they, you know, rehab people. And as he's... And then we get this scene of... Um, Donna and another detective kind of discussing like, you know, is this right? Like we're using him. Like he didn't volunteer for this. He doesn't even know what we're doing. And so it's implied, or actually it's pretty much outright said that they actually suspect that new path is the one making substance D, Mm -hmm. which is fucking ingenious. Yep. And so they purposefully, sent Keanu Reeves undercover to get addicted so they could so he would get all fucked up and get sent to New Path. Like they planned all this out. Purposefully used him to get addicted to this drug so they could ha- pretty much have a guy inside New Path even though he wasn't aware that he was, you know, doing this. Yeah, he was a guinea for pig. them. Yeah. Right. Um and it pretty much ends with Keanu Reeves' character um, in the field and it's pretty much revealed that New Path is indeed creating the blue flowers that 
substance D is, is made from. Made from. Yeah. And it's kind of implied that, I mean, he takes one. He's like, I'm going to take this and show it to my friends at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Which is kind of implying that, oh, he's going to, you know, he's going to spill the beans. Maybe. It's left very open-ended, very ambiguous. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of an ingenious Definitely. plan on New Path's part. Like, make the drug yeah. that gets people addicted. That's money. Then make the rehab center that helps cure them. That's money. Like, they're kind of yeah, kind of brilliant, to be honest. Um, Corporations literally do that today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, again, yes, this movie predicted the future to a very extreme, but we're kind of living in a version of this for the most part. It's like Coca-Cola selling their products and then selling vitamin water and smart water. <laughs> yeah, like corporations, you know, they create the supply and the demand. They fucking, like, we're constantly surveyed. Like, how many times have you been talking about something and then automatically, like, you get on Instagram you have an ad for it? Yep. I mean, I've like I've gone full cover my cameras with tape, honestly. And no shit, really. Yeah, my laptops all have the cameras. Holy covered. hell! I, I don't even. I know they're they're watching, and I know they're listening. And I'd rather just give them less power because there's nothing you can do to fight it unless you go completely off the grid. And it's that's not an easy thing to do. Um, I feel really bad for whoever is surveying me. Oh no, it's it's awful. It's either super boring. Or just porn. Like, that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, they're, yeah, they're, it's like really, really boring, or they're going to see some weird shit. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I. Hi, FBI. Yeah. Anytime I make a joke about violence or anything like that, I'm always like, you know, did you get oh, that? Oh, man. The amount, <laughs> the amount of reading and shit I do on cults, <laughs> I have to be on so many lists. Did you ever watch oh, shit. Um, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law? Not really, no. Okay, there was a, a scene where uh, Stephen Colbert, one of his characters, is like doing that. He's like yelling into his phone. He's like, did you know there are specific words that you can say that will put you on a watch list? And he's like, assassination, mail bomb, nader for president. <laughs> That's a pretty good, pretty good scene. Yeah, um, between the amount of like cult shit I look up and the fact that I am constantly screaming about nine eleven, <laughs> I'm definitely on a watch list or two, mm -hmm. maybe three. Um, I don't know. I think what makes this ending so upsetting for me is not even necessarily anything to do with the movie. It's the little card you get after before the credits, where it's Philip K. Dick listing people that he personally knew that were affected by drugs where they either died mm -hmm. or went brain dead. He even includes himself. And I think that was much more heartbreaking than like the Keanu Reeves part of the story. I don't know. Maybe it was just me, but like Damn. it was a full running list of like, Oh, I knew this person. He's dead. This person went brain dead. This person OD, this person OD. And it was like, God, when you see the, Real people's names there. It's it's upsetting. It 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 hits. It hits. <laughs> Especially as someone who is re has a relative that has been addicted to opioids and stuff, and probably still is. Honestly, it's uh it hit, it hit home. So I I mean not to Boom. take away from Keanu's experience. Obviously, that's I I guess the question is, does he get out of there and and reveal the whole operation? I kind of think he doesn't i think he is brain dead like he seems lobotomized at the end of this movie who fucking knows man no. it's ambiguous <laughs> no one knows what it means all right well should we uh jump to prop cop oh god <laughs> what are you taking bro i mean it's the obvious answer it's a scramble suit i mean as impractical as that would be in the real world i want one so. i was going to take some substances homemade silencer okay <laughs> sure that's definitely not gonna put you on another Why watch not? list ah fuck <laughs> um my only hi fbi <laughs> my only little bit of uh of trivia here is that this movie <laughs> has an interesting accolade of being simultaneously uh the highest grossing digitally rotoscoped animated feature ever and the most expensive uh, <laughs> digitally rotoscoped animated feature ever. Like it, 
the budget okay. was eight million and it only made seven million. So it kind of I don't even want to say even itself out because with marketing and all it that, it really didn't. No, nah, it it's a flop, honestly. Um, and it's well, son of a bitch. Still only sixty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which I wouldn't say uh, constitutes for a profitable film either financially or uh, yeah, it yeah. didn't. Again, if it had come out now, probably would have done great. You want to jump into Silver Linings? What do you got, sir? Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard because you know, Barris gets arrested. Uh, Donna sits there conflicted about her, uh, you know, future with the police. Keanu's brain dead. Uh, Luckman's the only one that we really don't get a final word on. Um, yeah. But my, my silver lining is actually <laughs> kind of macabre. It's kind of something you might put out there, honestly. I feel like you're going to take mine, and I'm upset about I it. I was going to say, Keanu's family really dodged a bullet with all of this. <laughs> they got oh, out. Oh, that's not what I was going to go okay, with. Okay, good. They got out while the getting was good. Like, yeah, it sucks the family got broken up, but by the way things were going, Keanu's dedication to his undercover craft work, they're better off not having in them having him in their lives. So, I think I'm going to go more fucked up. Okay. Um, I mean, despite the plan to send Keanu Reeves undercover unknowingly, New Path is killing it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that despite Keanu Reeves, you know, suffering from his addiction, that Donna got her man with Barris. Or at least that got was a my man. backup one. <laughs> if you took mine, all right, that's not too bad. I mean, those are bronze. I mean, linings, say, I mean, hey, but yeah, say what you will morally, but the Donna and her partner's plan is so far working out pretty well. I mean, all they need is they got him addicted. They got him sent a new path. I mean, all it takes he is found a flower. Is a, yeah, Donna doing a, a visit to see him, and the whole thing can get blown wide open. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, win-win. So, should we talk uh, pick-me-up movie alternatives? And for those who are new to the show, that's where Mally and I recommend a movie that you double feature with A Scanner Darkly. And the idea is that that second movie would be uh, a placeholder to fill that void in your heart if A Scanner Darkly leaves you feeling a little down and a little in the dumps. So... I got one, Dustin. I do, too. What do you got? And... It relates, it ties to this movie, and also, it is literally what I watched after this. Okay. Motherfucking John Wick, son. <laughs> it's a double dose of Keanu, totally different. Oh, guys, John Wick is such a good movie. Such a good movie. So much fun. I for, like, the second and third one, they're fun. The third they get one, man. absolutely oh, bonkers. The third one is so good. <laughs> bonkers yeah absolutely bonkers fun fact i watched the third one this morning <laughs> for the first time no i oh, saw okay. that shit in you i saw, I saw all three theaters. i saw i've seen the entire john wick trilogy in theaters i saw three in theaters like a couple hours before i had to go to work and i was by myself and man going to work i was like guys i gotta tell you about this shit uh he kills bonkers a person of a movie with a horse Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great. amazing. But legit, though, the first one is just it's just a good movie. Especially considering uh, it kind of was up against itself. Like, the director being Keanu Reeves' long-term stunt coordinator. Like, directing a yeah. movie. And then Keanu hadn't really done something like that in a long time. A movie like that. Like, it had the dick stacked against it. But yeah, those... I'll even go to bat for two. I mean, it's not as nearly as good as one I'll three. I'll go to bat but... for all three. Yeah. It's a brilliant trilogy. Yeah, it's pretty great. I will. S God, two's great too. Yeah, two's good. It's got common in it. Yes, it does. Um, my pick me up movie alternative uh, is also somewhat related. Uh, it's a movie about drugs with a f with far less stakes, I would say, than this movie. And a movie I just rewatched recently, and I'm. Happy to report it still holds up. Uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I just rewatched oh, it. Oh, man, I haven't seen that in a minute. Still really funny, man. Still got hell yeah. my favorite thing that Jamie Kennedy's ever done, his little scene. It's so fucking funny to me. 
about him peeing on the bush. <laughs> um, Wait, was Jamie Kennedy was was that Malibu's most wanted? Yes. Dude, that's the best thing he's ever done. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think his one minute scene in Harold and Kumar is by far the funniest thing he's ever done. But I will absolutely I will go to bat for fucking Malibu's most wanted. I haven't honestly. watched Malibu's most wanted in so long. I don't. I can't imagine it holds up. So oh, it <laughs> guarantee it doesn't. Yeah, I'm really gonna regret saying I will go to bat <laughs> for that movie. I know I am, but so Mally, I fucking said it. It's out there. Would you recommend this movie, A Scanner Darkly? Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Why that, not? That's it. No, yep. uh, no pat no uh parting words. I mean, dude, it's a good, like, you know, kind of trippy fucking kind of a drug crime movie. Um, with a little science fiction thrown in, you know. And a lot of comedy. This movie's really funny. Oh my god, yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely a hilarious movie. Yeah, uh I think it's a pretty cool, funny, great to look at movie. I think Philip K. Dick is always uh uh, some intriguing stuff. I think Link, uh, Link Ladder did a bang up job. Oh, I want to show this to my friends that do drugs. Oh, cool. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> no, no, it's great. <laughs> uh, plus, I mean, the performances. FBI, are all... my friend. I don't have friends that do drugs. <laughs> the performances are great all around. So if you want to see Robert Downey Jr. doing his thing, Woody Harrelson doing a really good stoner, dope fiend kind of thing, it's they're all great. Keanu kind of asleep throughout most of the movie, but, I mean, I give that... So was, I mean, his... It, it was called for for his character. Yeah, I was going to say, I give it to him because his character is supposed to be on a downward spirally path. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's worth a watch. Why not? Um, Anything else to say before we Fuck yeah. wrap it up for the week? Um, I mean, I wish this fucking FBI agent my computer would chime in, but he's not <laughs> yeah, do saying shit. you guys shit. recommend it? FBI uh, agent Johnson? Bob Johnson? <laughs> All right. He gives us thumbs up. Yes. So, uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe and leave a rating and some feedback wherever you are. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever. It doesn't matter. We just would really appreciate your uh, honest opinions. Um, help! Yeah. Help us. And you can do that. By sharing us with your friends, family, and the internet on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And lastly, before we go, I have a clue for next week's episode. So, next week is my choice. Um, yes. I kind of teased that, teased this uh, movie, I think, last week with The Happening. Um, this is a movie that is, uh, relies on a specific date of, uh, of the year. So that's coming up. But my clue is, despite all my rage, I am still just a bear in a cage. Mally, I know you're not happy with that. All right. (laughs) (coughs) Sure, buddy. Great podcast in there. Coughed right in the mic. Um, all right. I coughed away from the mic. Fuck Doesn't you. Doesn't sound like that on the record. <laughs> anyway. Well, right, let's get out of here. Good mic. Let's get out of here. Let's fuck off all into the right, night. All right. Fine. All right. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. Please tune in next week where we're talking about bears, cages, and rage. Uh, and until then, I have been Dusty Goes to Hollywood. That's Mally. And as always, bye, Excelsior. FBI. Excelsior! 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 Look at us!